It has been sometimes said that uh, 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 the culture of the self in the Greco-Roman society was linked to the decay of the old political and social structures, the, declines, the decline of the cities, the decline of the old and traditional aristocracies, the development of autocratic regimes, the increasing, increasing importance of private life could have been factors for the rise of a so-called individualism. But my hypothesis is that those historical processes, if they really took place, may have produced some changes in the culture of the self, but they are not by themselves the reason for the high value attributed to the care of the self. And this care of the, the self is very well known and very highly, highly valued since uh, at least the fourth century uh, before Christ. For instance, following at least uh, Plutarch, a king of Sparta, when he was asked by someone why Spartans did not cultivate uh, uh, their land by themselves, but let the islots do the job for them, this uh, king of Sparta gave this answer, the reason why we do not cultivate our land is that we prefer to take care of ourselves. <laughs> and in uh, Xenophon, in the Cyropedia, we see Cyrus, a model of a great king and a good man following Xenophon, we see Cyrus coming back in his palace after several great victories and conquests, and he uh, uh, meets his old friends and companions and asks them, when, what shall we do now? And Cyrus himself gives the answer. Uh, the, uh, the answer is not, well, I'll take care or will take care of the new empire, he says, and now that we have won victory, we have to take care of ourselves. The culture of the self is not a late phenomenon due to the decline of the classical city. It was an early phenomenon and it took in the antiquity several forms. The first philosophical elaboration of the principle you must concern with your, yourself with yourself is found in a dialogue written by Plato, in the Alcibiades. Uh, the uh, Neoplatonists considered that this dialogue had to be the first in the collection of Plato's works. Albinus, a Neoplatonist of the second century after death, said that every naturally gifted young man who has reached the age of philosophizing and practicing virtue, should begin by studying the Alcibiades. And Proclus considered this dialogue as the Arche Apaces Philosophias, means the principle and point of departure for all philosophy, because this dialogue teach people to get concerned with themselves. And in, fact, and in spite of the late subtitle given to the text uh, Peri uh, Anthropines Fuseos about uh, human nature, the theme, the topics of the entire dialogue is the Epimeleia Heo II. Socrates tries to convince Alcibiades that he has to take care of himself. And I'd like to underline only three or four points in, in this uh, uh, analysis of the Epimeleia Eotu. The first is, why should Alcibiades take care of himself? The, re the reason given by Socrates is that he is at a point of transition in his life. Uh, uh, Alcibiades is not satisfied with the privileges 
given to him by his birth, his fortune, his status. He says specifically that he does not want to spend his life, katabionai, profiting from all this. Alcibiades wishes to gain the advantage over all the others inside the city and outside also over the kings of Sparta and over Persian sovereign. But Alcibiades very soon shows that he is unable to succeed in his attempt. He did not receive the good education the young Spartan, Spartans enjoy. He has been given over to an old slave, completely ignorant, and he does not even know what the words justice and concord mean. Discovering how ignorant he is, Alcibiades is in the greatest embarrassment. He despairs, but Socrates intervenes and tells him this important thing. If you were 50 years old, the situation would be serious. Then it would be too late. But you are still very young, and it is precisely the moment when you have to epimelestai, to take care of yourself. So, as you see, the, uh, uh, the obligation of taking care of oneself is directly linked first to the age of the youth, to his project of uh, ruling the city, and to a defective pedagogy. But how can Alcibiades take care of himself? Nobody is ready to help him, at least among the crowd of, f the f of followers, he, uh, the crowd of followers he had when he was still very young. Now, when the dialogue starts, uh, uh, Alcibiades is over 16 or 17. He has grown up. He has beard on his cheeks. He is not desirable anymore. That is precisely the reason why Socrates intervenes. Socrates has for Alcibiades a philosophical love and is able to help him in taking care of himself. So, as you see, the care of the self is directly linked to a kind of personal relation, a personal and philosophical love from the uh, master uh, towards the disciple. But Socrates and Alcibiades have to make clear what is precisely the concern with oneself, what this concern with oneself consists in. And Socrates explains that the self is nothing else than soul. And that taking care of the soul implies that one discovers what this soul really is. And therefore, one has to contemplate his own soul, or better than that, the divine element, which is the reality of the soul. Briefly, we can see that in the Alcibiades, the care of the self is clearly linked to the political ambition of a young aristocrat. If you want to rule the others, you have first to concern with yourself. Secondly, the concern of the, of the, with the self is linked to a defective pedagogy. You have to take care of yourself since the education has been unable to teach you what you need to know. Third, it is linked with an erotic and philosophical relation between the youth and the teacher. And it has the main form of the self-contemplation of soul. Well, I think that the uh, culture of the self that appears in the Greco-Roman culture of the two first centuries of our era is deeply different from what we have met with Alcibiades, Socrates, and Plato. 